Good afternoon from London. It's a bright February afternoon here, almost like a spring day. And hello from me, Dr. Dermot Hudson, the chairman of the British Group for the Study of the Juche Dea, chairman of the UK Korean Friendship Association, an official delegate of the Korean Friendship Association for the UK, and also president of the Association for the Study of Sungan Politics. Today I'm uh, going to say a few more remarks about self-reliance and juche uh, because uh, my earlier uh, video uh, on the subject uh, was perhaps a bit short uh, due to some technical difficulties so I hope to expand on depth uh, on the subject of self-reliance uh, this afternoon. Now, uh, many uh, West, in fact, most Western policymakers and so-called experts on the DPRK lack uh, any kind of re real understanding of uh, the DPRK at all, and they think uh, that uh, if they uh, can impose more and more sanctions on the DPRK it will collapse or it will change its policies and lines and in particular it will uh, capitulate and abandon uh, unilaterally abandon its nuclear deterrent just like uh, Libya did and of course they are deluding themselves they have no real understanding of the DPRK and one of the myths they have is that uh, uh, the DPRK was uh, set up by the Soviet Union or China or both and uh, it was dependent on Soviet aid and of course it's not just uh, reactionaries and bourgeois experts who believe this uh, you know some on the left uh, believe it and I can tell you a funny story uh, this afternoon uh, about uh, how a uh, leader of a particular British left party, I'm not saying which one, uh, was on the British delegation to the 13th uh, World Festival of Youth and Students in Pyongyang uh, in 1989. The delegates were taken to see the West Sea Barrage uh, in the DPRK, which is on the west coast of the DPRK near to Nampo City. And that was constructed uh, largely by the Korean People's Army in the 1980s. It's a genuine miracle of uh, self-reliance. Uh, if it had been built in a Western country, it would have cost five billion dollars to build. And, you know, I strongly uh, recommend if you get the opportunity one day to go and see it for yourself. Anyway, uh, this uh, character, when he was uh, taken to see the West Sea Barrage, said, oh, this was built with Soviet aid, uh, which, of course, is totally untrue. And the... Korean comrades, uh, you know, accompanying the delegation were just stunned by the uh, remark. But it shows the ignorance of uh, some people uh, about the DPRK and people who should really uh, know better. And uh, it is a fact uh, that during the Fatherland Liberation War, uh, known as the Korean War in the West, which was provoked by the US imperialists and the South Korean puppets, uh, the DPRK was carpet bombed by the US imperialist air force, you know, the air pirates of US imperialism. And the devastation was immense. Uh, there were only three buildings left standing in Pyongyang. The imperialists boasted uh, that it would take a hundred years for the DPRK to reconstruct and recover from the damage. Uh, the damage 
uh, you know, amounted to uh, billions and billions, if not trillions, of dollars. Now, it is true that the USSR and other socialist countries, not just the USSR, uh, did uh, give uh, internationalist assistance to the DPRK in the post-war years, uh, you know, in the 1950s. And President Kim Il-sung, in a speech to the Ali Akram Social Science Academy in Indonesia uh, in 1965, uh, you know, referred to that uh, assistance uh, given by the socialist countries, which ran into, uh, which um, uh, I believe uh, was 550 uh, million uh, dollars or equivalent to that uh, sum. Now, as you know, I've just said, you know, the damage uh, caused by the US imperialists ran into billions. So that assistance that was given to the DPRK was only uh, a fraction of uh, what was needed to reconstruct the country. And President Kim Il-sung himself stressed uh, that, you, you know, uh, however sincere and or generous uh, internationalist assistance might be, uh, the main thing is your own efforts because such assistance will be at best secondary. It will be supplementary to your own efforts. And, you know, if you don't actually uh, make your own efforts, uh, then, uh, you know, any internationalist aid will actually be ineffective. Also, uh, very few people uh, know this, uh, that, in fact, uh, you know, the uh, relationship between the uh, uh, DPRK and the... Uh, rest of the socialist camp was not always uh, fraternal and uh, during the early 1960s uh, the DPRK's uh, relations with the Soviet Union were quite rocky. Uh, it just uh, about stopped short of an open split. In 1962 the Soviet revisionists or Khrushchevite revisionists if you like uh, actually imposed their own form of sanctions on People's Korea, basically ending economic and military cooperation with it because the DPRK uh, would not accept the revisionist and capitulationist line uh, that the Soviet Union uh, was trying to force on it and other countries at the time. President Kim Il-sung, uh, in a speech in 1962, said that uh, the DPRK, uh, if necessary, uh, could and would live without aid. And, uh, you know, the uh, to imperialists of today who are raving about uh, sanctions against the DPRK uh, should realise that, you know, the DPRK uh, will advance uh, by self-reliance smashing all the sanctions. In uh, my earlier video I stressed that self-reliance uh, is not simply a temporary tactic, it is uh, like the permanent basic strategy of the Korean Revolution. It's an application of the Juche idea uh, to the economic field and uh, Respected uh, Marshal Kim Jong Un in 2014 said, We can say that the whole history of socialism of our style boils down to self reliance. In the days of building socialism by our own efforts, our party and people underwent unprecedented ordeals and difficulties, but they were loaded with all honours they could not enjoy through the history of their nation spanning thousands of years. Had we abandoned the principle of self-reliance, succumbing to the pressure by outside forces, the Duce-orientated socialism 
would not have been born on the earth and the name of our country would have suffered eclipse along with the collapse of the worldwide socialist system. On the track of self-reliance, Chalima rose up on the ruins of the war and such a miracle as the birth of a manufacturer and launcher of an earth satellite and a nuclear state was wrought, a miracle of great significance in the national history. And I, I think that uh, beautifully uh, sums up uh, self-reliance so so eloquently and so well. And in fact, uh, in the DPRK, uh, you know, self-reliance is the history of the Korean Revolution and goes right back to the days of the anti-Japanese armed struggle. Uh, initiated and led by the great leader, President Kim Il-sung. And indeed, uh, that uh, very armed struggle itself uh, was a self-reliant one. Uh, President Kim Il-sung uh, roused the Korean people uh, to fight against Japanese imperialism instead of uh, hoping that a big power would... Uh, liberate Korea from uh, Japan uh, for them and hand them independence on a plate. Uh, you know, they went out and fought for independence themselves and President Kim Il-sung uh, formed the anti-Japanese People's Guerrilla Army uh, on the 25th of April 1932. It was during the uh, anti-Japanese um, struggle that the Korean people uh, learned to be uh, self-reliant. They uh, had no uh, rear base or state uh, to support them. Some anti-Japanese uh, guerrillas uh, thought uh, that the uh, USSR, the first workers and peasants state in the world, would uh, build a hand grenade uh, factory for them. Uh, so they requested, uh, you know, uh, this uh, to be done and no reply came. So uh, President Kim Il-sung, uh, in the spirit, revolutionary spirit of self-reliance, uh, got the uh, anti-Japanese guerrillas uh, to make their own hand grenade from, uh, you know, materials that existed and it was called the Yongil bomb. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, I was uh, very lucky to be uh, shown the Pyeongchang revolutionary site in Pyongyang, which uh, was the, uh, you know, place where the DPRK uh, built its uh, early munitions uh, industry and independent self-reliance uh, munitions industry and that uh, site had a uh, section about the uh, Yongil bomb uh, and the, the guide uh, told us uh, you know how President Kim Il-sung he himself had given in instructions about how to make the Yongil bomb you know it was a great achievement and of course today uh, the DPRK has its own nuclear Yongil bomb uh, the uh, nu D DPRK nuclear deterrent, which has been uh, made uh, using 100% uh, DPRK resources, technology and labour, and is a great achievement. And throughout the history of building socialism in the D uh, DPRK, uh, self-reliance has always been applied. Uh, the DPRK refused to uh, join uh, the revisionist-led uh, Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, or Comic-Con, as it's sometimes known. Uh, instead, they uh, put forward the line of building an independent national economy on the basis of self-reliance. And a few weeks ago, I was reading this wonderful little book that was produced in the DPRK, uh, in the 1970s, uh, which is actually reminiscences by uh, actual uh, 
Korean workers, you know, from, from the shop floor about how they applied the spirit of uh, self-reliance. And there's, there's a, uh, you know, great piece in there by, uh, you know, a worker who produced the first uh, DPRK uh, tractor, the Chalima tractor in the uh, 1950s. And, you know, the DPRK went on to industrialise uh, you you know in the spirit of uh, self-reliance so uh you know it was uh, a very great achievement uh, that the dprk was able uh, to industrialize on the basis of self-reliance and has uh, today an industry that can turn out you know virtually anything from uh, a wristwatch uh, to uh, a computer to a nuclear weapon you know that is a very great achievement and I would like to leave people uh, today uh, with a quote uh, from this book by Dr Malcolm Cordwell uh, who was a lecturer at the very famous school of uh, uh, Oriental and African Studies of the University of London and uh, he looked very closely at the question of uh, development and underdevelopment and so he wrote this book uh, The Wealth of Some Nations which uh, you know he sort of attempted to explain why uh, some countries are very rich and why uh, some are poor and also uh, look at alternative uh, uh, systems. Now, he actually visited uh, the DPRK, and there's a short section in, in his book on the DPRK, and he uh, wrote as follows. What is clear is that deprived of massive loans, US military propping and integration into the international capitalist economy, South Korea would collapse, whereas abiding by Juche, North Korea can stand independent indefinitely. End of quotation. And that is very true, and I think that uh, sums up uh, the great vitality of self-reliance, and it is a great truth that the DPRK uh, will indeed uh, stand independently, independent, and will stand indefinitely, no matter what sanctions the imperialists may impose on the DPRK. Uh, thank you uh, for listening uh, to uh, to this video. If you do not already subscribe to the channel, please subscribe and also to our affiliated channel, UK KFA. And please check out our online events. Uh, we have an online uh, Juche Idea study session on Saturday, 27th of February. Please check out the Facebook events uh, for this. Uh, so uh, have a great day. Stay safe and see you again soon. Goodbye.